negative feedback, I, a lot of people, they frown upon it, but I think it's the best thing because now you know what you can do to be better. That's right. But I mean, at first, we, if we don't first know what's wrong, we can't fix it. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Underrated, underrated, we the underdogs, underestimated. Yeah. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Totem. Today, we got a very special guest. Uh, if you want to be learning to educate yourself a little bit more about business and some tactics, you're going to want to listen to today's show for sure. But like always, we got Eric here in the house with us. How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Just remember, guys, that we are on YouTube and Spotify, just as a Totem podcast on Spotify as well. Um, if you guys like the conversations we're having, uh, just like the one we're going to have today, and if you could keep, want us to keep bringing on guests, um, just make sure to give the video a thumbs up and make sure to click subscribe and then hit the bell for notifications so that way you could be notified every time we got a new podcast coming up. Yeah, Eric. So the guest, the guest we have on, I think he's very important. Like in our business, in our businesses, I think we should all be doing some sort of stuff in in, in the field that he specializes in and and is a and is a pro in for sure. But it has stuff to do with marketing. So. Uh, Dean Palmer, owner of uh, Dreamscapes. Welcome, welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I, I so appreciate this. This is a great opportunity. Uh, you know, at, at Dreamscapes for us, we're a, we're a small digital marketing agency, and, and we're working on building relationships with small and larger business says that that want to scale their business and also retain the great customers that they've had over the past. And marketing's changed in the last you know, eight to 12, 15 years enough that there are new strategies, there are new tactics, there are new things that some business owners aren't aware of yet, you know? And so part of my job is to educate a client as well so they don't listen to the wrong people, tell them things that are gonna cost them a lot of money and waste a lot of their time and not show a benefit. So, you know, my, one of the things that I, probably chirp about more than I should, but is their return on their investment. And that ROI becomes really, really important when you're sinking a, a significant percentage of your of your business's budget in advertising, ROI is really, really important. You want to get the biggest bang for your buck. So it's it's it when I first started working real closely with that, it sounded kind of funny when I said, no, don't buy that. You don't want that. Don't spend that money on that. <laughs> you know, when I knew yeah. I could sell it to them, but they didn't need it. They didn't need that. They needed something different. And, you know, they could use their money a little more wisely and be more efficient with it and and ultimately scale their business faster than they had planned. So that's part of what we try to do. Cool. Yeah. So, so give me a little backstory, if you don't mind, a little bit about, like, who you are. Okay. And uh, your, maybe your childhood, how... How oh, the wow. person you are today kind of uh, developed, you know? Wow, that's a long time. I'm an old guy. We don't have enough time on this thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, don't, you, know, you, don't, like, you don't seem like you're an old guy, though. You still, well, thank you. you. you got I the, appreciate you, that. you got the energy like I going, appreciate like, that. Like, you know. oh, I, I, do, I do admit that I'm a passionate person, and most things that I get involved in, I put all my passion in. And so I like to think that that's a strength. But, uh, you know, I grew up in an Air Force family. Uh, I we were very mobile every three to four years my dad got transferred and we trans we lived all over the country and parts of the world too you know and so I grew up in in Germany a little bit on the east coast a little bit the west coast a little bit and then finally my dad retired in Colorado and I became a Colorado boy and have been here ever since so it's uh, during all that time it was always we were always uh, as a family about service what can you do for other people? And as I developed and matured as a young guy, off to college and, and figuring out what I wanted to do, I wanted to coach young, young men and I wanted to teach. And I was able to do that. And I was able to be an administrator for, 30, for 18 years and uh, be a coach for 31 seasons. So I coached high school football for that long and just retired from coaching football in last May. And now I'm doing my marketing business with the same passion, with the same level of commitment that I did my teaching, my administrative work, working with children the same way. It's just what can you give back to those people? And business people need individuals that will help them build their business. And because they're just not trained in it. 
You know, they have a passion for whatever they do, whether that's running a, a owning and running a chiropractic clinic or a dentist office or an HVAC company or a plumbing company. They all have their own expertise. Marketing just doesn't happen to be part of that expertise. And that's where we want to help out. Talk, talk to me, if, if you can, a little bit about like, uh, like why you want you, you wanted another challenge because you, you were you were a teacher you coached and, and and all that stuff you served and you retired and then you're just like uh, then you you want to start a new business people I mean it, it's great but a lot of people would argue that you're crazy for like be like why does he want to start a new business now when he can just like press the button on like ah just I go think on the there beach, are some of my relax. family members that ask that question <laughs> what is he doing what's dad doing you know what's your well, answer what's your you answer know, I think my answer is this whatever I do whatever I whatever I've poured myself into I want to give back to others and and I think that's the commitment I learned from my parents and through my professional life and I want to carry that into my business life. I think I've always had that entrepreneur spirit. You know, owning, as a teacher, we had summers off. You know, and I owned a paint company for, painting company for 12 summers. So we'd go paint people's houses, you know, and, and we'd go find the, the, the little lady who was, you know, the little librarian that couldn't paint their house. We'd go do their house for her. You know, make sure we do something like that. Uh, so it was always about giving back. Give something back and that's what i'm doing with this as i've learned more and more and more about the business <coughs> excuse me the just this passion inside you to help people who don't know what you know scale their business help their families build something of a legacy if you will for them and i know that's why business people are in business they're not just there to sell a product they're building a legacy for their own family and I think in part, that's my legacy. My legacy is, is leaving the thought of helping others to my family, to my daughters, to my grandchildren, and you know, wherever they may go. And whatever they may do, they'll always, I hope they'll always see that that's what their grandparents did. You know, they, they gave to others. You know? and, in, and while doing that, we're able to have the things that they wanted to have too. So yeah, there's sure. a balance in all that. So, so, so as like a teacher and stuff, like you kept doing, would you do stuff like every summer? Is it just because you wanted to be out there and helping people? Well, you or is it just because you something. You, got, you know, you, I, a guy can't sit around for three and a half months. Yeah. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's what you I was you like. You go going crazy, on. right? You, you, and that's part of that. It's what are you going to do? Well, I don't want to sit around in the, in the, I like to be in the sun, but I don't want to just sit there in the sun and do nothing. So painting was constructive. It was active. It helped people. But, you know, and it was a way to build a little, a little bit of a part-time job during the summer. So that's what a, a partner and I did that for, for about 12 years, yeah, together before I finally went into administration. And then I worked pretty much almost year-round. So. And so, so, when, so when you decide... When you make that decision that you want to go into, you know, start your own business and mm -hmm. stuff like that, why, why in the marketing space? That's a good question. You know, I, I, think, I think from the research that I did, it's just a, it's such an evolving area. You know, years and years ago, we remember when we were, when you were a little kid, when I was an older kid, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you travel, when, when we took vacations, we always drove because... You couldn't, we couldn't always fly. We couldn't fly at all. You know, I took one trip in a plane before I was 21, and that was to Germany and back, and that's it, <laughs> you know. Okay. But uh, you learn to look around and what's out there. And so we'd take trips and we'd play these games in the car, as a lot of kids still do today. But you saw billboards on the highway, right? Advertising whatever. You know, Stucky's Truck Stop, who cares? It, you know, Denny's, whatever the restaurant was, the gas station. That was the way that businesses advertised. They bought billboard space for a certain number of months at a certain cost, and that's how they advertised to the public. Businesses in, in small towns weren't any different. They did it in the yellow pages, right? Well, mm -hmm. when was the last time anybody looked at a yellow page? You know, we, we mentioned that a few minutes ago. The only, the only thing you use it 
nothing to talk down on the yellow page people. You, right. But you use it to balance your bookshelf or your table, you know? That's it's right. Like, that's, that's, that's right. What, or that's if, you you got a, if you live in Denver and you have the big thick one, you put it in a door and it won't close. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, it's a <laughs> great a, a, a great paperweight or a doorstop. So, yeah. you know, pe- we advertise differently. Bus- and businesses, bless their heart, ha- are going to have to get on this. And a lot of them are very savvy. They're very educated in it. And they do a really, really great job. Other people who don't understand it are the people that I look for to help them, to educate them a bit about it, to show them where they don't have to spend $20,000 a year to promote their business and get a lot of people in their doors. You know, when, when we talk about, and, and I'm sure we'll talk about the different strategies, but when you're doing paid ads on Facebook, for instance, or on Google, you're spending a lot of money and you've got to stay on top of that spend to analyze whether you're getting your return on your investment, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you do things on your own, when you do a podcast or you do a video that you put on your own company website and their, their Facebook, it costs them nothing. And yet they still get the same number of views. And then they start to build followers, right? And they start to build a thousand followers, 15, 2,500 followers. And people are coming in their business and say, yeah, I saw your video on such and such on Facebook the other day. It was awesome. We came. Here we are. You know, we want to do that. So there are ways you can do it. And, and don't get me wrong. You can, you can spend thousands of dollars a year, you know, uh, advertising your business and you'll get a return. I think you can do things a little more efficiently and get a bigger bang for your buck, if you will, and, and, and improve your sales, improve the number of customers you bring in, it, whether it's, it's a, a plumbing service or whether it's a chiropractic clinic. You know, I, I know doctors, bless their hearts, it, because I'm close to people in my family who are healthcare professionals, that they're not taught how to build and scale a, biz- a practice. How do they get people in the door? You know, and if you just are, are worry, working with word of mouth, that's going to be effective, but it's going to take a lot longer. And so I, wanna, I can show them some ways that they can do that much more quickly and have a bigger return on that investment. Yeah, over, so it's, over a short and a long period of time. So it's, so it's like the thing that me and Eric talk about. It's like you're a doctor, you're a practitioner, whatever you do, mm-hmm. you keep doing that and let us help you. You know, you know, you know, do, do handle this. True. You know, because Be- because when a lot of businesses start, like newer businesses, they think that I'll just open up my doors, have all the inventory, have, have everything looking pretty. People are just gonna walk in the door like nothing. I'm just I'm just be making money right away on my first day. Be, because I don't, I'm not a, a a practicing medical professional. I I can see that. I may not be right. That may not be quite accurate. But I think it's a reasonable thought. And when we think about when a, a doctor opens his doors or her doors to practice, right? Mm-hmm. You just think they're gonna kind of come, but. You, you and I both know that doesn't happen. It can't happen. No. Right? Especially, so, especially for doctors because it's something that's so personal. Oh, it's like you have to be exactly. able to build that relationship you and trust. Build the relationship, build the trust. And so they're trying to do that with new patients, right? And I'm trying to do that with them, trying to build that trust and a relationship with them that says basically what you said, worry about your practice. Yeah. Practice medicine. Do the best work you can. Let me take care of your marketing needs. And we'll go over this monthly, and I'll sit monthly with a with a dentist, with a chiropractor, with a surgeon, with with a plumbing service owner, with a HVAC owner, and say, okay, what have we done this month? This is where your spend was, and this is what was your client intake. What were the number of jobs you wrote tickets on? I mean, it's a it's a wide variation, I know. But it's still service. A, a chiropractor is performing a service. They're a professional, exactly. So is that HVAC guy because I'm. I want an HVAC guy when my air, air conditioning goes out, you know. And yeah. I want him to know what he's doing. I don't want him worrying about. Gee, I hope that Facebook ad goes well today, exactly. you know. Or <laughs> yeah. I don't want him worried about that when he comes to fix my AC. I want him to make sure he takes care of the AC. I'll take care of his. Of his advertising campaign, 
Now know, that we're talking about different like industries, mm-hmm. which one do you think is the most challenge that has the most challenges to kind of bring up to the market? Like, are you talking maybe like in a specific niche? Like mean? say like in the plumbing industry, the HVAC, or oh. like the doctor, the practice, that stuff, or which one do you think is the, the like the toughest? Because you know? it could be because there's either nobody's really known for doing marketing or in that certain industry, or just people have like a negative like look on it. Oh, I don't know if it. I don't think anybody has a negative look on anyone who advertises necessarily. I think that it's more difficult, and this is just my opinion. Okay, it may be more difficult for say a chiropractor or a dentist or. Or watch this one, a plastic surgeon, because plastic surgeons don't go to Centura Health to work necessarily. And they may only have one or two, right? But you got the before and afters, you know, depending on what kind of surgery it's true. you do. I mean, and that's the, the that's true. The results will speak for themselves on that one. And me. but then I and I know people in Southern California that are spending literally thousands of dollars a month to advertise their business. You know, and they're they're doing some re- really wild things. Some of them are some of them are revolutionary, and some of them are they're spending money. You know, you hope you're getting it back. Uh, I, I think that each each specific area has their difficulty and their ease. You know, but I think it's the group of people that they're marketing to that may make it more or less difficult. You know. In uh, you have a wider population for, say, a plumbing service to choose from than you may with a chiropractic clinic. So you have to focus that advertising more pointedly toward people who are looking for a, a healthy lifestyle or who have had pain and, and from injuries or from lifestyle or from athletics or whatever it is to see that chiropractic is where they need to go. Sometimes they haven't discovered that. Um, I think that's very important where you just said, like, as a business, you have to target it to one spot. Because I think a lot of businesses we have, we've all been through it, but you're like, everybody's my client. But then you like, not everyone is your client. You got to target and focus on that. That's right. And that's like, that's right. Well, hiring a pro gets you, you know, like you. So it's like, you got to know, know your market. So, so knowing your market, in understanding that will help you then step back and say, okay, so what can I do? What can I point toward my clientele? Mm -hmm. How am I going to do that? And I'm going to do that in a different way with uh, a plumbing service than I am a person who runs a health spa. That's going to be a whole different campaign. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's, but that's what marketing teaches you. Find your target area, Hone in on that target and then present what you're going to present as an offer and and have people get people in the door. Or in our case, because we're digital, get people to click, click on the website, click on the ad, find out what's there. What are you what are you offering people? You know, and sometimes when you're if you have a mindset that says, here's my business, there's the open sign, let them come. It may be a while before people come in the door, right? So you've got to find something that will encourage people to come in the door, to click on the button, you know, to take the offer, to make an appointment, to just call me, call me 15 minute call. I'm in, you know, let me know more about it. How can you do this? You know, I'm, I'm kind of laughing because so, so my, my daughter was watching a cartoon is uh, SpongeBob. Uh-huh. She's watching SpongeBob and she's like, and SpongeBob's like, we are officially open, you know, and he flips the sign, you know, and he's all just in there and just waiting and waiting and nobody shows up. And it's just like, it, that's it, a that's great the, film that's clip. The, that's the image I had. That's the image I had. In my head. That's a great. We need that's, that I'm clip. Over, I'm over here just laughing. I need that clip for my business. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting that in my Facebook ad. That was, that what are good. you doing to get people in the door? Right. We're open. And when you're saying that, that, that whole time, I was just playing that over my head. I was just like, oh, that's man. awesome. I That'd learned a lot awesome. of stuff actually watch like with my watching. Oh, lot, they have a lot of messages like movies and stuff like oh, for kids. And movies, TV shows, commercials, t- television commercials that are targeted and, and it's interesting to watch 
television market to adolescents. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, well, I'm never going to buy that. It was never intended for you. It was intended for your young teenage son or daughter. And Mm -hmm. that's the market they're going after because that market returns, don't they? Once you get a kid to like a product, they stay with it forever. And if they identify with that product, they'll keep going and going into adulthood. So, that, yeah, it's real interesting the way. Yeah. So, because there's also like different levels of marketing, too, right? Like, there's, exactly. there's like the TV advertisers, you know, go out the big bucks to spend millions and millions of dollars. Oh. And then there's also like local mom and pop shops that just need a little bit something extra. To, to get more traction. Right. And, and it's like what right. we were talking about it earlier. Like, me and Eric, when we talk with businesses, they'll be like, hey, you know, we can make a great commercial video for you and stuff. And they're like, so what channels are going to air on at what time and stuff? And, uh, right. and we're just like, uh, I don't think you understand. Like, it's going to be really, it's going to be 20 times more expensive to air it. And you're going to get like 20 times less views than if you would right. if it would be somewhere else like and i think that's, that's i think that's a saying. big misunderstanding yeah people are misinformed especially in yeah. scale down you know like the mom and pop mom and pop spend what well i and i don't know the exact number so i won't even try to guess what's a 30 second commercial i know what they run during the super bowl i remember that ridiculous though. ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> you know you're talking millions of dollars yeah. for a 30 second ad but what do mom and pop shops do who own a family restaurant you know and this is their livelihood this is their legacy for their family they can't have even they can't advertise on tv yeah and that's why that's why i think that could be like i guess a bad name for it so they're scared because if you come in like a marketer they're scared because they're like well last time i heard they over there they did a commercial and it was like five thousand dollars to do marketing for them for like a month it's like yeah so it's like and that's and that builds that that fear that barrier that they and and a big barrier to where well all i and that's why i want them to do is give me a call let's do a zoom call or if you're in local to me then i'll go to your business and i can go anywhere in the denver metro area all the way south to pueblo <laughs> you know i i i go where i need to go even all even you out know? east like today yeah <laughs> <laughs> but remember wiggins is a special place <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a special place for all of us yeah uh but do, you know you when you get there and you can just talk to them you just talk with them find out what are their interests what do they want to do with their advertising what do they want their advertising to do for them instead of just coming in and saying here's all the stuff you got to do because Mm -hmm. they all of that doesn't apply to them right there's no way I, i was speaking with two two young professionals this week and both of them happened to be women that were very successful women in their businesses and neither of them have a website and they asked me what I did and I told them and and they said oh no we're not buying a website I said I don't think you should but I know people that will try to sell you a website for about five thousand dollars and you'll never use it because you do your appointment making a different way and you do your and you want to control your appointments personally you don't want people to have that access to your schedule. Neither of them needed that, but they both needed to be on Facebook. And and I've been fortunate to to be associated with a couple of people in my business networking group that are crushing Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and they're going crazy, you know, and, and they're seeing the benefits of it. They're seeing the benefits of it. And all I told them to do is make some videos and have fun. Have fun with it, but yeah. don't spend money buying ads and that you don't need to do. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. Just like actually being genuine and wanting to help people out. Like you, you're not there to force them to buy something that they're not going to need. Right. It's about like having the conversation with them and actually pr- talking to them, breaking it down. Like what do they actually need and what it's going to benefit them the most. And and I think that's that conversation where you're building trust, but you, but I'm also building understanding. I need to know what what is it that they're really looking for. They they want more people in the store. They want to sell more product. 
okay, well then let's do a, a short video on that product. And that's all, you know, and, and maybe it's just as simple as that. Um, but it, it, takes, it takes time to build that. It takes time to build that relationship. And I'm, I don't know, I'm, I, don't, I don't own it, so it's not like I'm sorry for it, but too bad for people who do that, for, to try to jam mm -hmm. stuff down business owners' throats saying, I've got your answers, here they are, just buy it all. It might you know? work in the short run, but then long term, people are, the word's gonna get out about you and how you're actually treating people, it's like, it's not gonna go good for and I'm And I'm hoping, I'm hoping, that's what I'm banking on, okay, Eric? <laughs> that people will talk to each other and say, hey, this is what I did, and Dean helped me out, and I'm not spending a whole bunch of money, but I am spending a little bit of money, but we're really seeing results from it. And that's what I want them to have, the we, results. We gotta invest money, if, if you want it. <laughs> it's, it's like, I just, for me, like business, it's easy just to transfer into like working out. Like, hey, I wanna get, I wanna get a little in shape, but I don't want to do anything or I don't want to eat right. Well, like we're That's not going right. to get any results. That's like right. I want to grow my business, but I don't want to market. I don't want to be open to new ideas. I don't want to do anything. Like, well, it's probably not going to do as great. Well, that's a good point. That's a good point. And, and in talking with business owners who have, I think they all understand the idea that you're going to have to spend money to make money, right? I think we all understand that. That one's a pretty easy one to get to. But they're already spending this money and they probably, there's a good chance that they don't know exactly what they're spending it on and how it's supposed to help. Well, if you just take the, you know, the money that you're spending and say, hold that, hold on to that. Don't, don't buy that right now. Consider this. I, I know a, a young man that is very successful and he's spending almost $700 a month on paid ads on Facebook. And he's got not one client from it. Wow. But he's been doing that for at least the six months, seven months that I've known him. And that's a lot of money. He's not your client, correct? <laughs> no. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Let, let's just clear the water real quick. He's not his client. Okay. You know, and in fact, I've told people, I have, I have told people that I'm working with, I need you to stop this. Let's stop this, this, and this. Don't pay that out. Take that money, and I want you to invest it in this right here. This is going to be our long range project and it's going to take four months to develop. So just know it's going to be there. You know, it's going to be it. There's going to have a price tag on it, but then we're going to go back over to here and let's do this for free. And we're going to have immediate results with this, this, and this immediate. We'll see it in, in by the end of next week, you know, and for anybody who's got any level of patience, two weeks isn't bad business wise. You know, six days, six, 12 days, really, of business. That's actually really fast. You know, that's if you, fast. If you, if you put it into mm -hmm. business. But like at the beginning, you said, yes. it's, we'll do this, and it'll be like four months. And then that's, you know, we're talking that's about That's a long time. We're talking about people's attention span. Mm -hmm. So they're like, I'm, I'm going to keep paying this guy to do it, and it's going to take four months. They're like, you know, but it's part of the process. Yeah. You just got you got you got to be part of the process. Exactly. The, in in. The process while you're building that relationship and educating is talking about categories that will help them and categories that won't be as helpful for them or that are longer term versus shorter term. If, if I'm talking to a, to a business owner about search engine optimization, SEO, which everybody wants to talk about SEO, it's a very flashy catchphrase takes four to five months to develop an SEO score. So what are you doing besides that when you're spending that kind of money? You know, to, to have a fast, efficient, descriptive website, you know, that runs, I mean, quickly. Well, that's a project. And you're going to pour a little bit of money into it, but then you're going to let it run. Where when you're doing the things that you can do free, won't cost you anything, and yet you can get quicker results. And people ask me, well, what kind of results? What are we talking about? And I said, well, in a digital world, right, we're trying to get the best placement we can get on Google, right? Because we know over 80% of, of adults, if they need a, a, a service or a product, eight, over 80% of them will go to Google first to find it. Yeah. And I had to force myself to admit 
I do that, <laughs> right? And a lot of times, and who do you choose from? Well, of that 80%, almost half of them are gonna take within the first five. You're not going to page 15 to see. We're not going you're, there. You're not no gonna put like the best restaurant right? here and you're gonna go to page 15 and find it. You're not, you're not gonna do you that. You can edit this out if you want, but the big joke okay. is where do you hide a dead body? On page two of Google, because nobody ever goes there. <laughs> and exactly. I laughed. I almost went into hysterics the first time I heard that. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of true. Nobody gets to page two of Google. So my campaign for a young business owner, somebody starting out or who's trying to scale their business, do it in Google. Do it across the, the platforms of Google, Yelp, Bing, uh, Yext, things like that and get your ratings. And that's where business owners aren't as understanding of what Google can do for them inside that Google algorithm, their big long formula that ranks one above five. How does that happen? And how do you get your ranking? How do you get your five-star ranking? You know, and, and what do you do to keep that five-star ranking once you've gotten it? And then we can talk about reputation management and responding, things like responding to every review you ever get, positive or negative. How important are reviews? Like for, well, reviews, you said a positive or negative. Like reviews for, will drive that algorithm to move that ranking up on okay. Google. Okay. Now, one of the edges that I, that I tell people, they can do it themselves or they can hire it done. Okay? They don't want to deal with the, the numbers of reviews that they want. They don't want to respond to every one of those. And that's why I, that's why I like to talk, to them, talk to them about starting and maintaining a, a reputation management program that will take every review they get and respond personally to that review. If it's a negative review, own it and work harder to fix it to reassure that customer that wasn't pleased that we're working on we're going to get better at doing that we hope you'll give us another chance kind and of thing the negative feedback I, a lot of people they frown upon it but i think it's the best thing because now you know what you can do to be better that's right but i mean at first we, if a, we don't first know what's wrong we can't fix it yeah but first right? it's, first it's a kick in the gut first you're just like ah you don't want to hear that but yeah. then once you actually think about it well he said i wasn't doing this that good and, and, the, okay, and I think I think better. reviews. If you if a business owner looks at them, well, sort of like I do. If someone reviews my business and says something, if I get three people that tell me I'm doing this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, the same thing, I better look at it. Better fix it. It's probably and you better fix it pretty quickly, right? Mm -hmm. So within the world of Google, okay, they take those reviews and then they take the responses because we're gonna to respond to our reviews and that helps you. That's not gonna ding you as bad. If you leave a, if you leave a negative uh, review blank, then it's gonna really hurt your ranking. Not only are you not listening, you're not responding, right? And that's figured into that algorithm. Double negative. And like a double negative. And I don't know exactly the count that it does, but you know, in a reputation management phase, I, I think business owners, and I'm one too, and so are you, we are concerned about how people perceive us. What is our reputation? And that's exactly what that is. What is your reputation? You know, and we want to take care of that. So that's what reputation management programs do for us, you know. So, so when businesses start out, a lot of them probably don't have the, like a big, as big of a budget to start just throwing money into marketing mm -hmm. it's like if, if people if like a new just say for example like i'm the, i'm a new business what would you like recommend for me starting out like without like hardly any budget with with a real low budget and you're a startup company eric i'm going to tell you the first thing we need to do is build a presence online okay and that's going to be through your google profile your google business profile and that Google business profile has everything, builds everything about you that someone looking for your services needs to know. Who you are, what you like to do in terms of business, what your business serves, where are you located, what are your business hours, all of these things, 
And we see businesses start up that don't understand the importance of consistency. So you'll go build a, a Google business profile. And then I'm going to get on Yelp too. But I'm going to use mom's address because that covers a wider zip code. So you put it in a different address. And I'll use my, I'll use my northern Colorado phone number so people will think I'm more local instead of a southern one and now you have two different phone numbers and what business owners don't understand is that when you say one thing on google and another on yelp they're both matched and now it's inconsistent and now your ranking drops and we're trying my dreamscapes for us is is built to help businesses build accurate and consistent accuracy in their platforms, whether it's Google, Bing, Yelp, Yext, Instagram, Facebook, all of that information is identical to the comma. And I say that just to remind business owners, do it exactly. If you got to cut and paste, cut and paste. It's just going to help you. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to build your presence online. Now people can Google your business and see you have a business. And here are your hours, and this is how I can contact you, okay? I'm gonna ask you if you have a website, and it may not look like it's a $8,000 website, and you can't do a whole lot, but it's got some information there. We'll work on that later. That's not the immediate need. Your immediate need is Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, since you're a, you, you have a, a niche in the professions as well, and professionals should be looking at your business to help their business. Um, so we want to go to that next. We're going to build campaigns out of that. And then you're going to search for certain clients you want to do business with. And the third part that, that I would tell you that I want to do for you is then I want to create lead generate. I want to generate leads for you. Qualified leads, not cold leads that come across as more warm leads for you of people who are already looking for a media company to help them with their projects, they just don't know where to start. And they can't call any of the TV stations. That's not where you go. And you don't want to go multi-million. Your startup. Find somebody who knows what they're doing, who may just be four or five steps ahead of them, but can share their expertise. Okay, but I'm going to generate those leads for you. So those, that's where I went. And then we're going to maintain your, your reputation management. So I've got Google, uh, Google business profile, an, a, an organic Facebook, which means you're not doing paid ads. You're doing your own ads, your own videos. And on Fridays, you're not going to see a lot of people outside because you're going to put a lot of short videos together. You're going to time all those out to be released next week and the following week so you can work. And those are getting posted which some people still don't know, okay? And then we're gonna do reputation management to keep all your reviews. Then with every client you meet, anybody who has you do anything for them, you're going to request for them to do a review for you. And you are gonna personally request the five-star review and a comment. Not just the five-star, but a comment. And that's gonna, that's gonna jump you so fast on on Google, you won't believe it. You you won't believe that it can be done, and it can be done. And we haven't touched a five thousand uh, dollar website yet. Mm -hmm. We haven't done any SEO yet, right? But we've done some real organic, real immediate things to jumpstart your business. Now, yeah. once you're rolling, now you've rolled and you've got a profit. You become profitable. What percentage of that do you want to roll into your business for deeper advertising to create that that search engine optimization? So people, when they even say multimedia, it pops your name up, <laughs> right? You want to be number one, and you're going to rule number one. You know, it's not going to be float up and down each quarter, you know, or whatever the time increment is. So that's where I would start with a young business. Those are the pieces right there. Do you also like help um, like the business businesses 
kind of come up and create the content or is that kind of like on them and then they no, give it to you? because I can do that as well. I can do the, the content. If you would like to do your content and then have us edit it, that can be done. Or I've got some pretty good content writers that if you don't want to spend time with that and you just want to shoot video and edit and and do shows and do things like that, you don't have time for content. Let us do the content for you. So we can do the content while we're doing everything else with that. What do you mean with content? Are you like talking about like Act like t like the written out portion. Well, if we, if you're doing a, like a, an email campaign, if we find okay content like that, we're gonna that we're gonna about? talk to people. We're gonna generate leads from you, and then we're gonna email those businesses oh, okay, to okay. say, hey, this is who we are, right? And this is what we do, and we think this would be a benefit for you. If you'd like to know, learn more, contact me for a 15 minute phone call. Go. Well, who are those people? Okay, and how do you create that message so that one, it will be seen and it will be read because now it's a click campaign, right? Click it open. How many, let's send, let's be, let's not be, let's be smart about the example. Let's say we send a hundred emails out. How many people do you want to open them? Or how many people should open them to be profitable? Well, if you're doing 10 to 20%, that's awesome in your first year. Mm -hmm. Okay, to think that you might have eight or 10 or 20 might be a little naive and you might get disappointed if only 10 of them open an email from you. But think about if you were to send a thousand of those and 200 opened them and made appointments for you, what would you be doing? How would Everybody's you schedule happy. 200 people? <laughs> right? Yeah, that's like you got so to be, be, re be ready. If you open the faucet, you got to be ready for Thank it because it's going to come. Thank you. I think that's an important thing. And, and that's one of the, the, the premises that, we, that I'm building my business on is that I know my business is, gonna, is, is in the, the phase where I could have an, a, another client tomorrow and then have 10 more by next Friday. And real honestly, I don't know if I could handle 10 in a week because there's a lot of things that I have to do and there would be a lot of things that you would have to do to get that many people real quickly right mm -hmm. so that's why we want to pace ourselves you know and, and but we can get some quick results for businesses in getting people in the door getting product out the door building relationships with their clientele keeping existing clientele and then adding that's what a business needs to have. You know, if, if I'm looking at a, a chiropractor, uh, a chiropractic clinic, they don't want to lose their old clients, but they want new ones. Well, that means, can you handle, can you schedule 200 more patients? Well, then let's not send out 1,500 email offering 25% off your first visit. Because everybody and their brother will show up and you won't be able to serve the clientele. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? There are some negative things that can spin off of that. So I think they have an idea of how many patients they can serve in a week's time. And I have to defer to the professional to say what's reasonable. What, based on what you've told me, let's do this many, right? Well, let's use that kind of organic traffic and and bring people in and let them know what you're trying to do, you know. And then yeah. where are some other contacts for you that you may want to kind of head toward? What are some tips that you give people, business owners that you know they're like, you you know, you talk to them, be like, hey, maybe you should spend a little bit, some maybe some dollars, or maybe you should like start doing some stuff for your marketing. But they're like. I've been doing this for the last 10, 15 years. I don't need it. Like, what's what's your take on some of that stuff? Like, Well, you know, if you've got a... <coughs> do you think that's me. real or is it then just putting it up could their, be real. Their, their barrier? It could be real and it could just be the barrier. And if it, regardless of it, it's real to me. And if they want to listen to what I've heard, in a, in a, and again, I've been talking this whole time and... I haven't talked this long in a long time, <laughs> but, but, That's good. Let's um, go. <laughs> but if I'm listening, if I'm listening in, 
you know, in a 10 minute period, I would imagine I can identify two things, at least two things that you're struggling with in your business. And when I'm talking to you, I really want you to tell me, you know, Eric, what what are the three? I'll, I'll just say it. What are the three things that give you the biggest problem in your business? And they'll be able to tell me. I know they'll be able to tell me. They're sharp. You know, business owners are sharp. That's why they own businesses. But uh, in in telling me that back and I hear that, then I know that a, a paid ad campaign will remedy this problem you're having. A paid campaign will not do this one, but it will do the first one. And something longer term will take care of this one and a little bit of that one. So look, what would you say to this? Let's do a small paid campaign and do $350 a month, paid ads. Okay, we'll do it with paid ads and we'll track those ads. We'll measure the open, the click open rate and we'll click, click the close business rate. We'll, we'll measure that too. And we'll begin a small SEO campaign that will allow you to figure out what are your keywords that are pulled out of, out of Google. Because that's probably one of the number one ways you include your ranking is the keyword search in the keyword phrase, right? I saw a guy's website the other day and he's he happens to be in the insurance industry and his landing page does, does not have the word insurance on it, on the landing page. Insurance does not show on his first page. That's a red wow. flag right there. <laughs> but he's a great guy and he's a great businessman and he knows what he's doing and he's been doing it for a long time. But his business has plateaued off. So what am I going to want to tell him? I want him. I don't want him to abandon his SEO, but I want to redo his keywords. And so we need. We may need to look at writing some additional content. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't want to change your website because so many people try to do that and they get their hand in it and they get their feelings hurt. So I'm never one guy that's, that's going to walk in and say, huh, "Nice website. I'd get rid of that." Mm-hmm. Then you're gonna hurt people's feelings. I don't want to do that. But sometimes, if, sometimes people need their feelings. Sometimes they gotta have the feel. Hey, if it's yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> this one wasn't bad, but the keywords weren't there. You know, and when I do a keyword search on indus- on the insurance industry, I better see insurance, health, auto, home, casualty, collision, something in there, right? Yeah, yeah. a couple of <laughs> medical. <times. Yeah. laughs> you know, something. something. <laughs> Thank you. Especially on the landing page. Right? Especially on the landing page. And watch what happens to that SEO score. Watch what happens. Now, it's going to take a while to run, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But at least we're not building a website yet. Some people need the website, and when they need it, I'll tell them, look, it's going to cost you a little bit of money. And I can carry you. I'll tell you what. I'll let you do it in two two payments. Because So there's another thing. I've talked to some business owners or I've heard of like other people, you know, they're starting their business. They're like, I need to have my, I need to have a website. You know, they're like, that's one of the first things that I would, I would like other marketers that they're like, mm-hmm. Hey, I want, I want, I need to have a website up for these guys. And then it, I kind of go back kind of, I agree with you. You're like, I don't know if having a website is the ideal for you. So Maybe you should focus, like you don't focus on a- some free stuff first. If you don't got a budget, especially. Well, especially, and Eric had such a great example of that startup with very little money. And I'm sensitive to that. I, I, and maybe this is gonna make me a poor businessman. And if it is, then I'll just take that shot. But I don't wanna see a young man or young lady go do things that are unsound financially and then fail. You know, because right now I feel a deep responsibility in their success. Their success is really my success. If I tell them to go spend five, six thousand dollars on a WordPress website, and then their business doesn't get off the ground and they fold, and they had to go borrow that money either from mom and dad or put it on a credit card or something like that, I can't help but feel that ownership. And I don't want that 
So I'm going to try and give as sound and as advice as I can based on my own experience. And I guess being this old can help you sometimes, you know, (laughs) just try not to do that. Let's let's not go crazy. Mm -hmm. There'll be a time there's there's uh, actually a, a prospective client of mine. She's a she's the daughter of a very good friend of mine, and she's beginning a new business in Virginia. And it's a wellness business. It's a wellness coaching business. Okay, so she has some health products, holistic health products, and then she also does consulting, you know, personally. She doesn't have a website and she doesn't need a website. She is, guys, she is killing it on Facebook. I met with her for about an hour and 15 minutes uh, last week, told her that I'd seen her, her Google My Business profile. I saw her Facebook and she's decided to stay away from LinkedIn right now because that's not a real, necessarily a great audience for for that niche. But she's doing Insta- some Instagram stuff. I haven't seen that, but her her Facebook stuff is outstanding. That's where she's going to start to get her traction. But she doesn't know how to manage the clients that she has. So, and she asked me. She goes, you know, Dean, I. I it's not like I've got a lot of money, but at some point I've got to buy a CRM, a customer relations management uh, program platform, and she doesn't have one. And I said, okay, let me check on that. Let me do some research. Let me see what we need. And she says, I, I think I can get one for about $150, $160 a month. And I know that's... We'll see what that's going to be. I want to know what's the name of the one that she's looking at. <laughs> and, but I know people who are who are out there marketing a CRM for three fifty a month, and I don't want her to have to f- do that. Well, that's why we were talking about new products. And I said, well, if she's got that need, other people have that need. So now I offer a CRM, and she's coming on board. She's a young, right out. She graduates from college in December. That's how young she is. She's coming out into the workforce. She's already starting her business, and I'm probably going to do it for cost for her. So it'll be like 97 bucks a month, you know. It's but that'll get her started, and that'll hold up to 2,500 clients. I think she'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, and I think <laughs> you know? I think I think what's what's important kind of goes back to like what you were saying, like like that person, that business owner that takes that money from a family member or something, and then they get it. So you have like a responsibility. Yeah. for them to be uh, successful but then it's kind of, it kind of goes like you want to take care of people so so if you, in my mind i mean i process stuff different just say they have those five grand or whatever they mm-hmm. they invest it with you in the long run you're going to be if they they're successful you're going to be better because after a little bit they're going to be like hey uh let's open the faucet a little bit more dean you know uh, 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 let's move up to right. like the seven or eight thousand now. Now be, I'm doing good. Let's right. let's turn the faucet open a little. And so it's just it's just better, you know. That, the long that, run. I think that's a wanna... great point. That's a great point too. Um, in in looking at that example, I try to keep that in mind. So whatever we do, you have to start reasonable, reasonably, right? But whatever you choose has to be scalable. I mean, if you have exactly. to yeah. change and add, I mean, you're just going to cost the person more money in, that's unnecessary, right? Where if you start with the basic and you can, and if the basic that you have is scalable and you can just add this feature and that feature and that feature to it and it expands out, to me, that's the best model you can offer. You know that now I'm I'm talking about return business, right? Yeah. That I'm I'll sell you this because you need this right now. You don't need this big one over here. But later on, when you do, you're going to trust me when I tell you you need the big one now. We need to add the pieces. This is what it's going to cost. You've already paid for this, so just pay the balance of that, and you should be good to go. I think that that approach to business people is a is an honest approach. You know, when you when you have to build more, when they say, I need more, well, I can give you more because I didn't start you at the max yeah, before exactly. that would have broken you then. 
You know, so now we don't need 10 keyword searches in your SEO. We need 25. And it's, you know, it's, it's more than, this is $400 a month. And this one's going to be $1,200 a month. Okay, but I got to have, you know, 25 keywords in my, okay, here we go. And we can build that. You know, so all of it is scalable for the business owner. And it's also scalable for me as the marketer to say, this will better meet your needs, you know? So yeah, no. that's kind of my approach at no, it. No, no, for sure. That's good. Just gets me thinking. <laughs> I'm just processing, processing. No, it, it, it's a lot. It yeah. really is a lot. And, and if you don't live in the world, it's, you know. Yeah, Dean, Dean got us here thinking. So you guys are probably going to have to go back through and watch it a couple of times <laughs> for sure. But uh, Dean, so... One of the final questions I have for you is, uh, what do you want to be remembered by? Say, like as a as a dad, as a grandparent, as a as a you know business owner, as a person, as a friend. What do you want to be remembered by? Wow, I th- as a dad, I I hope I will always always be thought of, of as no matter what was going on, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, that both my girls always knew that they were completely loved, unconditionally loved. As a professional, I want to be remembered as that ethical, helping professional that I committed to clear back in a long time ago. You know, uh, as a as a grandparent <laughs> now. Uh, w- I think I want to be remembered as as that that grandpa that was fun and and gave us fun things to do and but taught us lessons that we needed to know too. So there's still a lot of teaching that goes on in my family and I think a lot of that a lot of the learning that goes on is mine. <laughs> you know, I, because I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still learning. Yeah. No, and, I, I think when we stop know, learning, we when stop I'm stopped learning. learning, they just need to put me in a box. Just put me in a box because I'm I'm done. Truly, no. That's you know? great. No, yeah. I think like like I said, when we stop learning, when we stop, you know, trying to do new things, I think that's when you know we stop growing and we start. Well, I, you know, it's it's well, like when you and I first met. You know, your description of how you were growing. You're growing a business. You're growing a family. You're a growing person that is trying to be better physically, emotionally, business-wise, uh, professionally, that those are things that are appealing to me. And so when I find a young man like yourself that wants to do that, I want to be an asset, if I can, to that person. You know, yeah. I, And I think that comes from the number of people that played such a big role in my life that would teach me the lessons that they learned real early that helped them. And so I didn't have to experience the mistake. I just passed that right up. Oh, I remember what Dallas said. I remember what George said. I remember what, what Ed said. I remember when this happens, don't, don't do this one. Don't, no, you can do what you want, but don't do this. That's the lesson too, right? And so that's what I've kind of dedicated myself to. Find somebody who is building themselves, trying to better themselves, and help them, help them. You know, they don't, they don't want to hand out. They just want to hand up, right? There you go. Yep. And we have plenty of lessons like that. Yeah. So, no, yeah. well, Dean, Dean, it's been, it's been awesome having you on. No, it's thank been, you. It's, it's been my, great. It's been my pleasure. It's an honor. Thank you for having me. I hope we can do this again. Yeah, for sure. No. I hope. I hope this all will be people. Fun. Yeah, we'll get some more. Get some more things to talk about. Oh yeah, for sure. There's always come back. Tell war stories. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> back when you have your big studio downtown, and <laughs> there you go. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, thank thank you, Dean, okay. for coming on. Hey, it's you know, a pleasure. I, thank I you hope, so much. I hope people, you know, really, you know, go back, rewatch, and take take will. notes. Take I hope notes they will. And, and learn. And yeah, keep, get your notebook with you, so you can. You know, and, and if you have a question, you know contact me i'm online dreamscapesforus.com you know schedule a 15 minute What's, meeting and is that the easiest way to get a hold of you well they can call me directly okay. you know 
You want that one? <laughs> it's 719-650-1475. Okay. We'll yeah. put we'll put all your links down below. Oh, okay, cool. Number. Yeah, we'll, we'll put, put it all down there. Oh, okay. We'll put, we'll Good put deal. it all in there. And uh but yeah, on the on the website because that schedules right into my scheduler. Cuz I have one of those nice websites now <laughs> that i told I'll you be, i got that first one it was yeah. crummy nope. <laughs> it yeah. was terrible well, well you but, probably didn't need it then but then now you grew but now i need it now you need and it. so i went to a guy and told him what i needed and he says i know exactly what you're doing and i know where you're going to be six months from now and i want this to do the same thing for you then that it does now and so my my website's built out for five years That's i'd say fair. pretty easily Oh, that's yeah. awesome. No, that's, that's pretty cool. Great. Well, th- thank you once yeah. again for Thanks. for coming out here and, and you know joining us on the podcast. Thanks. I'm always up for coming out to Wiggins. Man, there you go, go Tigers! There? I hope they're playing at home tonight. <laughs> we need to check the, We need to check the schedule. I, think I know. I should have done that. Yeah. yeah. But guys, All if right. we if we brought you some value today, if you learned something new, if we made you laugh, if we made you think. Just please share with one other person. That's the only fee we have here for the podcast to just get the word out for for the amazing guests we have on. Um, but yeah, guys. I'll I'll just leave you with our with our motto here on the podcast. An act of rebellion is to question. Thank Thanks, you guys. guys. Thanks. We'll see you later. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Underrated, underrated. We the underdogs, underestimated. Yeah.